Well, God bless you this morning and happy Mother's Day to every one of you. And if you have your Bibles, I'll be reading from 1 Kings chapter 17. Now, it's a very long story, so I just have to read the verses so that you can get the gist of it. And I'll be reading from verses 2. And the word of the Lord came to him, that's Elijah, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Cherit, and that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. And he went and dwelt by the book Cherith, which is before Jordan. And the ravens bought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening. And he drank of the brook. And it came to pass that the brook dried up, because there was no rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Arise! Get thee to Zarephath, which belonged to Sidon, and dwell there. And behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he had come to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And she was going to fetch it, and he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. And she said, As the Lord God liveth, I have not a cake. And but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil of crows. And behold, I am gathering sticks, that I may go in, dress it for me and my son, we may eat it, and we may die. And Elijah said unto him, her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said. But she make me therefore a little cake, and bring it unto me. For thus said the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail, until the day the Lord send that rain. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which Elijah had spoken. And it came to pass after these things that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick. And this sickness was so sore that it was, that it was no breath left in him. I'll just close off here. But I want you to go home and read the passage and actually get the whole story. I cannot read the entire story because it will be too long. God has given me a message, and in just be before I finish it, he gave me this message for you this morning. Amen. Now, if I were to name my topic today, it would be surviving tough times. Amen. My sermon today is divided into two parts. Now, I am sure you have heard the, uh, the term, wheels on meals. Meals on wheels. Well, I'm here to tell you about meals on wings. Amen. And the second part about this sermon is the case of the empty barrel. You are not a barrel case this morning. Now, how do you suffice, survive tough times? Now, tough times are unescapable. Almost every one of us have been faced with tough times, sometime or the other. If you haven't experienced a tough times, 
maybe someday soon you will experience it. Now, being a Christian does not mean that you are exempt from being, having a challenging times. But the fact is that the Christian life is more challenging than the normal life. Because we know that things can get pretty ugly. It can bend us out of shape. It could get complicated. And sometimes we feel we want to run to the hills and hide. But God will give you grace this morning and sustain you so that you can keep going on for him. So how do I survive this turbulent time? Our text gives us the account of Elijah and the widow of Zarephath. The chapter here has many insights of how God uses unlikely people and different sources to accomplish his purpose in our lives. True faith in God. And here we see Elijah. I'm going to talk about Elijah a little bit before I get into our next part. Elijah, I noticed, had three things in this chapter. First, he had confidence in the Lord. He, secondly, he, through obedience, Elijah was able to carry his mission. And the third thing is, he had nothing but a command. Now let us look at Elijah and his faith and his confidence in God. Now God wonderfully suits men for the task he, he designs for them. Now if anybody was suited for this task, it was Elijah. Now King Ahab, he did evil in the sight of God. And if you think he was evil, he had a wife who was worse than he was. He was, Eli he, she was Elijah's worst enemy. She was killing the prophets. Yet in the word of God, we see how powerless her tactics was because God was hiding him right in her backyard. When you are serving God as a child or a Christian, and you talk about the sins of people, and you know what I'm talking about, especially a different lifestyle. People will hate you, they would want to kill you, and they would dislike you and say all manner of evil about you. But God will take care of you. When you say his word, when you speak his word, he will always make a way for you. He will make you shining in the light of the eyes of men and women. Now God told Elijah to flee, to run. Sometimes God has to tell us to run. When God gives a command, he will give you direction. And Elijah did as the Lord said. He had no, he had no questions, no arguments, no complaints, no expectations. He simply followed what God had told him to do. Now God said, I want you to hide yourself in the brook. For I have commanded the ravens and you shall drink from that brook. And Elijah did exactly what the Lord had said unto him. He was obedient to God. Now following the Lord through obedience is the outcome of our spiritual life. Imagine the prophet, a man of God, with a plan of God, had to endure much before he could enter the promises that God had. God had already worked out the details for him. God is working out your details, no matter what the enemy might have planned for your life today. I am telling you, if God is for you, no man can be against you. For the grace of God will care for you when no one cares for you. We cannot say we love God without obeying him and his word. We must obey God. If God said so, let's do so. But the next section of this story is, I want you to see God's providence and God's care in the life of 
Elijah. God said to Elijah, I have already commanded the ravens to feed you. My God, wings on me, meals on wings for you today, Elijah. When God speaks, there is no doubt. His meals was already planned. He had meat in the morning and meat in the evening. He had to drink from the brook. It was not bottled water. It was fresh running water. When God gives you food, he will give you fresh food. Fresh food from on high. You don't have to work for it. He'll bring it to you. Let's look at the medium God used to bless his servant. Ravens. Now, if you know anything about ravens, they are said to be a humans and animals, but at the same time, they are greedy birds. They will feast on roadkills. They will eat everything that's rotten, and they want kosher and definitely off-limit the Jewish people. They, they are called takers and not givers. I am sure you have heard the term ravenous people. Yes. Now a ravenous person is one who would eat and eat and eat and never give out. Let us not be a ravenous person where we just sit down and eat and take the word of God and build in our hearts and we are not giving out anything. God, if God could have used a robin, a dove, he would have sent an angel. But he chose to use a flock of greedy birds to bless his servants. He had enough for each day. It wasn't stored up. Just like the manna that he sent for his children, each day they had fresh bread. God wants to give you and I fresh bread each day. Fresh bread from heaven. God said he will prepare a table in the presence of his enemies. God wants to bless you. Sometimes we worry as human beings about financial deadlines, house demands. We spend sleepless nights thinking about tomorrow pressures. We are, we are drawn down ourselves. We drown ourselves in worrying. But God wants to bless you today. When God wants to bless you, it doesn't matter what the source is. He can use a greedy, stingy, not so good looking person to bless your life. God already has your blessing marked out and no man can steal that blessing because your name is on it. The point is, ravens were just the delivery system, but God was the source. God is your source this morning. You might be saying, oh my God, I am going through this and that and the other and look what God has done, but God sees your need. Out of the mouth of a filthy bird, God sent morsel to sustain and satisfy the hunger of his servant. God will use the least to do great things. In times of drought and want, you might say, well, what are you talking about? Example, God may provide differently than you might expect. We cannot fathom God's ways because his ways are past finding out. Your employer might be able to give you a paycheck. Your paycheck might not be able to reach the amount of things you have to do. But God is your supplier. But God said, I will, I will supply all, all, all your needs according to his riches in glory. Now hard times may have held you down. They have probably bent you out of shape. But they won't last forever. And it happens to the best one of us. God 
is your father this morning. Yes. And he sees your need. Yes. Now suddenly, the brook dry up. No rain. Natural resources will fail. Things were going well for a season. You were nourished physically. You feel that you have been sitting by a brook. No income. No help from anyone. You end up disappointed, parched, and thirsty. Your season in life has changed. In times like these, we are tempted to believe that God has abandoned you. But I am here to tell you, the book, brook that was dried up will run again. Because when God steps in, things will become different. Then God said to Elijah to arise. You've been there for a long time. You've been sitting by the brook. It is time for us to move out of the brook. It is time to get out. The same God that was with Elijah in the valley is the same God who is with you today. When things go wrong, he can make them right. If God cares for the birds of the air, which implies look and learn. Those flighty little fellows, they are industrious, yet they're carefree. God's care and provision is greater for his people. He cares for your fears. He cares for your worries. He cares for your troubles this morning. He has given you and I the ability to grow crops raise animals. We are more capable than those little flighty fellas this morning. In God's eyes, we are more valuable. Don't underestimate yourself. God said to Elijah, I want you to go to Zarephath. Now, Zarephath is a place of testing. The journey doesn't end. We must be tried again and again and again. Yeah. It might take for us some time, a long time. But changing our location doesn't mean that our situation is changed. Our location might change, but your situation might not. But God will change you yeah. in that situation. Yeah. God uses various testing and hardship in order to refine us, to purge us, and to bring us into his image and likeness. Your trial was designed just for you. What might be happening to me might not be happening to you. You might have it differently. James 1, 2, and 4 says, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive a crumb of life. Blessed is the man or the woman that endures the temptation. God told Elijah, I want you to meet a widow. I am sure that there were many widows in Zarephath in those days. And sometimes God sent us in the worst situation. God wants to prove us and also prove himself in that situation. Amen. We just have to trust the leading of God as a child of God. Amen. And this brings me to my second point. The widow of Zarephath. The case of the empty barrel. Now, God told Elijah that he would meet this widow. When he came to Zarephath, he met the widow, and he asked for bread and, and drink. Now, you might think that is, this is an unreasonable request. Now, Elijah, if he was looking for encouragement from a human standpoint, he'll be looking for a woman in well-dressed, in nice robe, looking fancy, 
living in luxury, but instead he met a woman gathering sticks. It was a sign of poverty. She didn't even have fuel to light a fire. Now, even though you and I may feel broken down, you may feel left out, you have to have fuel in your life Amen. to survive the tough times. Amen. You must have fire to light. You must burn within your heart. Amen. People were looking for different things, but she was looking to light her fire. We have a children of God to look to see where we can light the flame and burn on for God. We must have fuel in our lives. Now let's consider a situation. A single mother facing economic pressures. She had already given up on life. She was about to have her last meal. She and her son and died. Her husband probably died from famine. Some of us here has been facing economic pressures. Husband gone. Income gone, job gone. We are living with the last meal. You're a single mom with no resources, no family support, no food, no hope. Maybe your child is too weak before, because of starvation. But I'm here to tell you, we can face tomorrow knowing that God is in our tomorrows. Few of us can say today we had nothing to eat. And this is where the grace of God came in and found us. In the depths of our misery and poverty. Not physically but spiritually. God reached down his hands and picked us up and saved us from disaster. Human tendency. As long as we have resources we become comfortable and we forget to lie on God's provision. But she was hospitable. Knowing that she had to divide her bread. She was having her own problems. But she was willing to share of a meager supply. How many of you have been going through the same problem? And you feel that you have been stretched from one side to the, to the other. You have been living at the very end of life. And you think that all you need is one little push to go on. Well, I am here to tell you, it's little is much if God is in it. What are you willing to give? God asks Moses, what do you have? Moses had a rod. All the little boy had was fish and bread. Samson, all he had was a jawbone. Because of this lady giving, she was able to survive the tough times. Amen. We should never measure God's supply but what, by what we can see. Because God is not limited. He can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think. Let us not forget to be hospitable. Because he is our Jehovah, Jireh. He cares for us. He provides for us. When there, there be no lack when, we, when he provides for us. Elijah did not measure the size of the request by the widow's possession, but by her obedience. And God blessed her beyond expectation. Now the Bible says that her son died. Disaster struck again. And she blamed the man of God. Now it's easy to blame others when we are going through the rough. Because we do not understand in our confusion what's going on. And she had her son in her bosom. 
And Elijah took the son out of her bosom and laid him and cried out to the Lord. And he was revived. There are some things that you and I might be holding close to our bosom that may have died. Maybe it's a son. Maybe it's a husband. Maybe it's a lost relationship. I am here to tell you that God can revive your miracle and give you life again. Amen. Just take it to the Lord in prayer. Amen. Amen. And this is the first miracle in the Old Testament when the dead was raised. For this was the best Mother's Day present any mother could have got her son back. Her poor meal that she gave and her son, she was able to eat for two years and more. In famine and lack, she received more than she could ever own. She received special favor. She had daily supply. Sufficient for the day is enough. He wants to do the same for you and I. He knows your needs. He is your provider. He will provide wisdom as you need it. God will provide comfort as you need it. God will give you grace to sustain you in the time of your need. God wants to provide for every circumstances in your life. Our needs might increase. But God's supernatural supply will appear in stunning ways. Christ's moment will bring divine encounter when we are limited and constrained by natural needs. Sometimes we just have to go through the test. Elijah was tested with a dry and brook. But God blessed him with a testimony, a dwindling barrel and a depleting bottle of oil. A dying boy. The widow, she was tested by giving God her mega bread and her empty bottle of oil. A dying son. And God did it for her. What are you be willing to give today? Are you willing to give God? By her act of kindness, she stretched her hands to feed one more. There are times when you and I have to stretch to receive the miracle. We have to stretch to receive what God has for us. Amen. It is time we take the, the lid off and believe God. Amen. Let us put our faith and trust in the unlimited God. For God who never fails will never fail you today. God said, I will surely do this for you. If you Feel like you have run in beer and you're living on empty. Your brook has dried up and your barrel is, is a, you're a barrel case. Well, I said he has joy for you this morning. Yes. Psalms 4, 6 and 8 says, God wants to put gladness in your heart. He wants to increase your corn and wine. He wants to make you bountiful and happy and blessed. I want you to know that you can survive the tough times. Because God delights in the prosperity of his children. He will cause streams to run in the desert. All because he is the source of our supply. Even if your meals are on wheels or they are on wings, he will meet your needs. God is in charge of my everyday life. The brook was just a preparation for the blessing to come. You might be thinking, oh my God, I am in this situation. I am in a turbulent time. Nobody is seeing me, but God is seeing you. God is watching after you. He's the same God of yesterday, today, and forever. The barrel and the oil was not empty. He did it for her yesterday. He did it for you yesterday. What, what tell you that he can't do it for you today? 
God can do it for you today. He has your name written on his heart. In conclusion, I would like to end with this story, the story of George Mueller. George Mueller was, was not only different, but he was unique and remarkable. He was a man of faith. This man supported over 10,000 orphans. Exclusively on prayer, he built orphanages, he built homes, he housed people. But Mueller never asked anyone for contributions. He never asked for a loan, and he never went into debt. Mueller trusted God every day for miraculous provisions. One breakfast morning, there was no food in the pantry. He and his staff confidently said grace. Suddenly, there was a knock on the door. It was the local baker. God had woken him up two o'clock in the morning and telling him that the orphans needed bread. He started to bake those bread and he went over and delivered those bread. Amen. Jeff, as soon as he delivered the bread, there was another knock on the door. It was the milkman. He had all this milk that he could not use and he was asked in the orphanage if they can use the milk. Wow. What had happened, his wagon had broke down right in front of the orphanage. <laughs> so in order to repair his wagon, he had to empty all of the milk. <laughs> now tell me that God cannot supply your need this morning. Tell me that God is not listening to you. I am here to encourage you this morning yes, yes. that Jehovah God is still yes. your provider. Yes. You are not forgotten. Man might forget you. Yes. People might forget you. Your children might forget you this morning. Yes. Your neighbor might forget you this morning. But I have a God who say he will never forget you. Yes. Remember, Tough times will come. And it will happen to most of us. But I am here to tell you again that you can survive the tough times. Whether it is meals on wings or the case of the empty barrel, God can fill your barrel again. I just want to say a very happy Mother's Day and God bless every one of you. Yes, God. Yes, God.